It is a beautiful but chilly night here in the Pacific Northwest, but it won't dampen the spirits here inside Alaska Airlines Arena as we get set for Pac-12 Women's Volleyball between two of the best teams in the nation. It's number three, Washington, playing host to number four, USC. And the Pac-12 standings look like this. The Washington Huskies sitting in that top spot with a slim lead over USC and not far behind them in the three spot is Stanford. Hello everyone, I'm Krista Blunt. Kelly Tennant has encountered some flight delays and will be joining me shortly. So until then, let's talk about the importance of this match. We talk about postseason play right around the corner. Seedings will be important. So these head-to-head -head matchups could mean the difference between a number one seed and a Pac-12 crown. Well, we have the top two teams. We also have two award winners from this last week. For USC, the freshman of the week was Ebony Wanabu. Helped the Trojans to wins over Oregon and Oregon State. Big numbers combined 23 kills hit 488. She is really finding Mick Haley's system. And on the other side, back in the back row, it's the Defensive Player of the Week, Jenna Orlandini, the senior libero. She has come up big. Truly their emotional leader. Helped with wins against Arizona State and Arizona. She had a career high 31 digs at Arizona State. They will need her to be big here in this one tonight as well. Well, both teams are feeling the anticipation of this one. The big matchup, the Huskies took the first outing down in LA in October. Will USC redeem themselves? We will have the starting lineups and number three, Washington, number four, USC, right after this. Back at the University of Washington and Alaska Airlines Arena. Krista Blunt alongside Kelly Tennant, who's made her way in. And for the USC Trojans, their starting lineup looks like this. Haley Crone, the junior setter, will try to lead the way. Samantha Bricio leads the nation in service aces as well. We mentioned Wanabu. And it goes from there. Alexis Olgard in the middle with Hannah Schreer. And the head coach for USC is Mick Haley in his 13th season. He is 336 and 73. Over 1,200 career wins, and how about four national championships to go along with it? And for the Huskies, the starters look like this. Number seven, Katie Bills in the center position. We mentioned Orlandini, the libero at the bottom, and big play in the middle as well. So Belden's been playing well, and you can't forget about Krista Van Zant and the head coach of this team, Jim McLaughlin, in his 13th season with the Huskies. What a record he has also, 294 and 84 all time. 11 straight NCAA tournament appearances. And these teams are looking just around the corner for NCAA play, but they have to get past one another and finish up Pac-12 play. It is so close as Brucio gets us started with the serve, and a tough one it was. Pretty up there, Munoz. Quick set in the middle by USC. Trying to exploit, and there is the big arm of Houston a lot from both of these teams is going towards that back line and finding those corners. You have some outsides on both sides that do such a great job of picking their spots. So beware of the defense in those areas all night. This is Jenna Orlandini, and because of the back line play, players like Orlandini, Kelly, the liberos are going to be so important in this match. Crucial, get past the block. Plays like that, Orlandini has to be ready as does Hagelin. This pass there by Natalie Hagelin, somehow USC keeps it alive. Munoz, the pass off the mark and waiting on the other side in the middle. The Huskies with the point and Melanie Wade. Great awareness, fast reaction from Melanie Wade. That's something that Washington has really been working in the mix so well is getting those middles going. It's become a very important part of their attack. A bit off the mark there was Wanabu and the Huskies extending their lead. You know, something I remember from playing at USC as a young player is you come into this arena and it, it's a lot going on. The fans are really loud. It feels like you're kind of being engulfed. So it's a really fun place to play, but sometimes there's more errors early because of that. Double block on the other side for Washington and Wanabu right into it. That's exactly what Krista Van Sant wants to do. They do such a nice job of anchoring this block on that left side. Melanie Wade, what feet she gets over and then presses late. I love that block. That's how you shut down such a high-level player like Wanabu. This is a Huskies team that has won 12 in a row. Things have started to come together, but finally able to break serve. Sarah Shaw down the line. Shaw's one of those players that loves those high hands we've seen all year long. So Washington has to play great defense off the touches of the block, try and reach and grab those whenever possible. 
fast pace to this one already, and we expect it. Two of the top teams in the nation. The top two teams in Pac-12 play. The attempt by the one-handed set, and Haley Crone can't get it, and Washington gets it back. USC is looking a little uncomfortable right now. And like I said, you come into this arena, it takes you out of your rhythm early. You have to get confident, and you have to get the pass down. That's where it starts. Once you get the pass, then you can do everything else. But Washington's creating so much pressure right now in every aspect of the game. Jenny Nogueras, the senior setter to serve, has checked in for the Huskies. Guadabu to the back row attempt there by Cassie Strickland, but USC will get it back. Exactly where Wanabu wants to go, those high reaches that she's so good at. She has to use that physical dominance she has as her advantage. Kelly, we mentioned she was freshman of the week this past week. She had 13 kills but hit 522 against Oregon State. Those are kind of crazy numbers. Phenomenal. Those are middle numbers. She does such a great job of keeping the ball in play. Low air. So fun to watch. To the middle and Melanie Wade. Outside again, they'll say it caught the line. Sarah Shaw getting a couple of looks. So Shaw is now exploiting that line shot. So expect Washington to make some moves. Kaylee Nelson moving over on that right side to try and slow that down. Ali Pizza Segola has checked in the freshman center for USC with the serve. Out set to Van Zant. Tough pass to handle by Pizza Segola. Say, net violation against USC. Washington will take it. Krista Van in the back row. Remember, she is a weapon back there. That's one of the great things about this Washington offense is they are striking from every part of the court. Washington, a team with five starters back from last year. A short kick in the middle there by Alexis Olgar, though, to break serve. You get the feeling both of these teams have started to just put it together. This is that time of year where things maybe start clicking and at the right time. I've seen them both in the last week before this match, and they both are just playing such a high level of volleyball, keeping those errors low and just really fun to watch. Bailey Nelson, who's been getting a lot of looks by the Huskies as of late, has also checked in. Bruce Reddins, the freshman in for USC. two really good blocking teams is all that defense that plays around it so you have that second swing in transition. Melanie Wade is talking about Palo Alto, California. Serving up for Washington. Tough get there by Nogueras and the free ball to USC. It's a Segola. Alcadicio got every bit of that. Wow. So Sabeldin now has to work so much harder in the middle for Washington. If it, that's going to be the tempo that you are putting out to Bricio, you've got to beat her out there. You have to press over really well. That was a great swing. And Kelly, I have to tell you, I didn't think the set was quite where she needed no, it. No, it was she really tight. That is quite the quick arm. such a fast tempo on top of that you have a player like Riccio or Nelson that have the quick swing you really have to work hard on pressing your hands over as fast as possible and then holding them there so you can get those touches but any slow movement and you're going to get beat Katie Beals has checked back in you can see Nelson being talked to by Coach McLaughlin little tip off the block and the back row can't get it for the Huskies so USC will take it Elise Ruddins is one of those players that USC really needs to rely on tonight because she is kind of that X factor. If she can be on with everyone else, then you have another weapon in your arsenal. But you can't go without players like that because you have to be elevating your game with the offense. Pass off the mark for Morlandini. Somehow Munoz still gets the set. Wannabe tries to find the back corner. Morlandini was there. Decision maker she is, Kelly, in midair. And she knows that the Washington defense has been so good already. So she knows she has to mix it up early so that after that kind of tip, she can go back and have those big crushing swings that we saw just a few plays ago. Well, we just saw one from her, and she fooled everybody on that one. Tip up and over, and somehow, Leanna 
Alicia Belden gets the finish. You have to be on your toes to be able to grab those balls. Because this match is going to be so close, I see this really going five sets, to be honest. Those are the types of plays that are going to kill you. It's the effort plays and the miscommunications that really eat you up in the end. What a shot from Cassie Strickland. 33rd ace of the season. One of my favorite servers because not only does she bring power, but she is always finding the right spot. She knows where she wants to go with that ball. That's not an ace just because. High toss from Strickland. She's second in the conference in service aces. Wabu into the block, hope to get out. But the Huskies get it. Slower tempo, you give Washington more time to get over and close. USC has to avoid that. You have to stick with a fast tempo like we saw Debrisio earlier. That's how you can get past Washington. Otherwise, they're too quick. Serving has definitely improved for the Huskies. Big part of that, Strickland. And USC's got to find a way to break it. Back set to the back from Hamlin. her do that a few times on Wednesday night against UCLA. She's so smart with where she's putting it, and this is a great bump set as well, giving her a lot of opportunities. The Huskies getting this crowd into it. A five-point lead here in second quarter. Number four, USC in town. We'll see if they can get it turned around against number three, Washington, right after this on Pac-12 Network. Works. Back here at the University of Washington, set number one, and the Huskies with a five-point lead over USC. And thanks in big part to Cassie Strickland. Big serving from her. She has 33 aces on the season now. Second in the Pac-12. Little hurt for the back row. Catches the back line. I love it. Great job from Cassie Strickland on this one. She does such a nice job in this entire play. Gets that dig herself, and then comes out of the back row. USC has to work harder. They have to know that she is an offensive threat everywhere she is on the court. You have to give her that respect. A little wide on that one, a break for USC, but some damage already done. Thanks to Cassie Strickland, the sophomore out of Huntington Beach, California. And Kelly, she was typically a defensive player, a service sub last season. She's really worked hard and become even a bigger hitter for them as well as we just saw out of the back row. And a blocker, too. She will get some big blocks tonight. I have a feeling she plays much taller than she is. Number one server in the nation, Samantha Bricio, in a service error right there. You don't see that very often from the sophomore out of Guadalajara, Mexico. What a competitor she is. 63 aces on the season. Shaw again off the block and out. USC gets it. And Sarah Shaw seems to be the main target for USC right now. Hey, keep doing it. If she's figured out that she can be successful using the hands, go for it. Washington, again, their defense so good. Trying to go in scenes and get past Jenna Orlandini a little tougher. Outside the Van Zandt, and she finds the opposite corner. Seemed to me like USC was still moving a little on that block, so then Natalie Hagelin didn't know where she had to fill. You have to work together. You have to stick with where you are in your position as a blocker so that your libero knows where to fill so she can go there immediately. Otherwise, she's just guessing. And Hagelin had just come back in after the serve. Had to make the Decisions, McGarrel serve a little tough to handle. Send it over. Back set to Nelson. And the back line, USC gets it. Great serve, and that's Wanabu. They're starting to look a little better. And again, it starts with the passing. You get the passing good. USC setters are very good. They know where they need to go, but you have to get them the right kind of ball so they create, can create good one-on-one -on -one opportunities for their hitters, and they're not constantly pushing it into the net. What a talent Wanabu is. The Volleyball Magazine High School Player of the Year coming in this season. Brings <laughs> on into the block. Stay back, Sam. Stay back, Sam. Bump set over to Shaw. And getting a hand on it is Cassie Strickland. Saving that one. Pizza Segola to the back, and Bricio, and enough on it. 
to get the point. Really nice decision. You have all three of your front row players going for their hits. You set Bricio out of the back. That forces Washington to make a decision and release if they want to, to get over to Bricio. Alice Pizzasegola, the freshman center out of Italy. Nelson, one of the touch doesn't get it. It goes long, and USC continues to chip away. Jim McLaughlin wants the timeout, wants to talk things over with his team. A three-point lead, never enough against a team like USC. These two teams met up earlier this season down in Los Angeles. The series has been dominated by the Trojans. They lead all time at 38 to 20, but Washington did win. The last one in Los Angeles, three to one back in October. This is a very special Washington team as well. First time at USC, Washington had won since 2008, but on October 27th, the Huskies were in town, and Kelly just did, it was a very close match. They ended up winning at three to one, but just hit, hit a little better, blocked a little better, and served a little better, and in close matches, those are those key entities that all the coaches talk to us about. The little things that you want to do right, and it's composure at the end of those sets. You can do everything great up to 20, and then if you have some unforced errors or you're not playing in system with your game, that's when it'll come back to get you, and Washington really just stepped up, and they have a very spread out offense, so it's tough to try and defend them because they just keep coming from every angle at you. We're at the Alaska Airlines Arena on the University of Washington's campus for Pac-12 Women's Volleyball between number three Washington and number four USC. Krista Blanc alongside former USC captain Kelly Tennant. And we knew this would be a good one. And it definitely is. USC, where they're traveling red. And the Huskies here on the home court. And the Huskies have come out, and it felt like they were controlling it, but USC has settled down. This crowd has definitely gotten into it. Set the bands in. Shaw into the block, right back at her. Sarah Shaw's not a player you want to necessarily bring inside because she does, does hit that low flat ball. She's able to use the hands. It's better to get her outside near the pin so she can do that. When you bring her inside, the block closes down and she really is limited. She's been very effective so far, but the Huskies made an adjustment. Tough serve from Van Zant, but the free ball, it's kept alive. Magaris. Straight down the line. Big time. So Elise Ruddins has to be faster. She has to take that right step in, get around the shoulders of Kaylee Nelson, and then press those hands quick so that Alexis Olgard can get over and meet her. Kaylee Nelson, the junior out of Salem, Oregon. It's a player that something just clicked for her last spring, and she's really taken off. She has been so fun to watch, and the volleyball IQ, I feel like her arm is so much faster than it was last year. The tempo of the ball to her quicker, and she has just been exploiting that line on everyone this year. Saturday, it's a huge Pac-12 football triple header with Bowling Nation on the line. At 11 a.m., Mike Beach and the Washington State Cougars battle Arizona. And then at 2.30, the Cal Bears head to Bowling. Quarterbacks for that matchup, Sean Mann and Taylor Kelly. Body numbers, I like to say, but that should be a fun one. And Pac-12 football has been on fire. So much improvement, so much more depth, and we've been seeing that throughout with both women's soccer, volleyball, basketball season has begun as well. It's all coming together, just weaving it all together, Kelly. Which is why you're so busy right now. <laughs> <laughs> you are pretty busy as well. Because it's that time of year it where Pac-12 implications on the line in volleyball. Everyone's starting to kind of think a little bit, or at least we are, yep. about postseason play and how many teams will make it in. The coaches are thinking about it. They're just not talking <laughs> to teams yet. They don't want their teams talking about <laughs> it. Sargola <laughs> looks for Alexis Olgard in the middle. They haven't really exploited that yet. The block gets a hand on it, but it gets through. 
USC is a touch too late on the attacks and on the blocks. They have to speed up the game. They've slowed down a little bit, I think, to get more in a rhythm, but now that's affecting their touches on the wall. Here's to Van Zandt, the junior hitter out of Reagan, California. Just goes a little bit of everything. There she is with that up. Nelson, again, up above everybody. Nice and creative on that one, Nelson. Coming inside, she's got a big block in front of her, and she just pushes it through really smart. Kaylee Nelson has needed a big match. She's, she's had decent numbers, but her hitting percentage has been a little bit low, a little inconsistent. Washington. She is really seeing those hands of the USC block in front of her, and she's taking the time to acknowledge them before she takes swings. Great up by Jenna Orlandini. I mean, you just see Elise Rudden's hand right straight up. Rudden has to press over. Excellent communication. Just great team chemistry for this Washington team. What a shot there from Sarah Shaw. Great angle. That was awesome. Push her outside. Again, that's where she really likes it. She's much more effective out there. Sarah Shaw, a senior out of Austin, Texas. It's a big rotation for USC. Bricio and Olgaard in the front. Makes something happen there. Melanie Wade tips it over. Bricio, right to Orlandini. Haglin with the set. Try to go down the line. It was Elise Rutten. She was looking for the touch, but won't get it. I think it's something good to feel out, though, to try and go towards those lines. You don't always want to go cross court or hit directly at someone. You want to see how much you can play with that line, how close you can get. Tough serve for Melanie Wade, and that'll be her 21st ace of the season. And Samantha Bricio just not quite ready for that one. That ball was also moving a lot. I like this serve because it's so flat and it just goes back and forth. So it'll hit your platform, but it hits the bone and then it flies off because it's just moving so much. Go to Bricio again this time. A little better connection. A tough one to get there by Nelson. They'll say, yes, she got it. So impressed with the play off the block. That coverage is huge for Washington. You're able to come off again, run this great set from Nagaris quick. And this just shows the athleticism of Strickland. I mean, she's flying into this ball right past Ruddins. Again, Ruddins has to hold still with her block. Emily Young now in for Ruddins in the front row for SC. Strickland still athletic, get herself out of the net also. And Bricio, I think, thought she caught the line. They'll say it goes long. And we are at set point here for the Huskies. A little frustration for Samantha Bricio. Great count on him. The best in the nation. USC's not done, though. Olgaard finds the back row. I like that Pizza Segola goes to the middle in those types of situations. She is a fearless setter, just a freshman, and she comes in and she runs this floor like it's hers. That was the right decision, and I like that she goes for it. Taylor Winningham has checked in for USC. starting to come together now for USC. Big difference is Emily Young's not moving on that right side block. She holds true to where she needs to be, so it makes it much easier for Hannah Schreier to close to her. Set point again for the Huskies. This crowd getting louder. Garris goes out to Strickland who takes some off. Emily Young, the lefty, we haven't seen her yet for USC. They won't get it. The Huskies take set one over USC. Big reason the Huskies got the first one was Cassie Strickland, their leader in service aces. And that's the damage she presents.
Husky fans happy to see their team took set one over USC. Big reason was the blocking game the Huskies had going at the net. Kelly, big defense for the Huskies. Big difference, huge. They have time to get over and close it up, and that made a big difference. USC a little slower with the offense and not as fast tempo, so Washington has a lot of time. But honestly, when you have players like Krista Van Sant and Kaylee Nelson hitting and Cassie Strickland going on a run with the serve. I mean, they're really playing a very balanced game right now, and USC is a step behind. Well, it was just a three-point differential at one point, and Coach McLaughlin took the timeout, and it was a good thing, and the hitting percentage really stands out. No doubt uh, USC's got to clean that up. They really need to clean it up. They have to get faster tempo sets out to the outsides. They need to get the middles involved. When you have Alexis Olgard involved in your system, the whole dynamic for USC changes. They need to start doing that. And not only does it help just get them in a rhythm, but it helps the outsides get more one-on-one -on -one looks and Washington has to work harder with the block. That's a very good point. We did not see a whole lot from Olgard in the middle. The middle for USC definitely was not as effective as we've seen them be in the past. But they also have to get past this player, Cassie Strickland, who leads this team in service aces. Had a good one in set one. Here at Alaska Airlines Arena, the campus of the University of Washington. Pac-12 women's volleyball, Krista Blanc alongside Kelly Tennant. And Washington took set one over USC, but a service there there to start things out. A good sign maybe for the Trojans. Munoz, fairly quiet in set one, gets the kill. It's a big time swing from Munoz, but off of a perfect Cassie Strickland pass. It was great location, but it's almost it's also fast so that they can run a fast tempo. Again, it comes down to how quick you're running this when you're trying to get past the blocks. Well, the seniors, Kylan Munoz for this Washington team. Short quick to Ovar there. And USC has to send it over. Beals goes to the middle. right there. Location seems a little tight on that set, but Elise Ruddens needs to be swinging high. You can't contact the ball low against this Washington block. See here, it's just a little low, but Krista Van Sant, credit to her, she really presses well. Yeah, that was pretty impressive. Uh, great adjustment by Van Sant. Way outside the Bricio, a touch off the tip of the hands, and it'll go back to USC. I've seen Samantha Bricio start slow in a handful of matches this year, and then all of a sudden she comes out and she ends with 15 to 20 kills and 300 hitting percentage. Yeah. So you can't count her out even if she's struggling early. Sometimes it just takes her a little bit of time. She's quite a competitor. A tough service there from Olgard. The back row can't handle it. And USC takes the lead. USC has won four of the last six matchups against Washington, but here in Seattle, the Huskies have taken seven of the last eight. And they have not lost here on their home court this season. They are 10-0 at the service area there by Olgar. Never easy to travel in Pac-12 play, and especially as the season goes along when teams are coming together. And when there's this kind of pressure, too, and all these teams are coming off big matches from the previous weekend always, so you don't have that much time to turn around and come in and compete at such a high level. Washington already a match this week, the win against UCLA. Bricio tries to take some off, and it still goes long. But a big win for the Huskies against UCLA. And for USC, it was wins against Oregon State and Oregon last weekend. Tough set for Pisa Segola, but she gets it. Sometimes forcing the middle works really well for USC, especially when Hannah Schreer's up there because she is so crafty with the ball. She finds a way, she turns that wrist, she keeps it in play, she's very low air. So she can get a lot of kills that way, and I like that middle setter connection and that rotation. This, again, you have Wanabu and Bricio on the front row. USC needs to capitalize on this rotation. Schreer's had kind of an up-and-down season for USC. I'd love to start producing her more. Bricio looked like she was gonna go cross-court at the last minute, Kelly went down the line. She likes to change it up because she knows she can't keep being predictable. She can't hit the same way. So the more she changes, the more teams are having to react. 
And this is a situation where Wade is trying to keep up with Christy Van Zandt on that block. Back set to Van Zandt. Oh, over to Mauricio. I don't know how she got to it, but that had something on it. That looked a lot like the Cassie Strickland set that we saw earlier we couldn't figure out. <laughs> Sometimes when you just make it go fast, you don't have time to think, and you just swing as fast as you can. Impressive arms on both sides of the net for these two teams. Here the crane to serve the pass off the mark for O'Garris, and Washington cannot get the free ball over. USC on a roll. Jim McLaughlin has seen enough. He wants the timeout. The USC losing set one to the Huskies, but come out on fire here in set two. They've got a three-point lead here in Seattle. Back here at the University of Washington, the Huskies took set one over USC, but USC has come out with a three-point lead here in set number two, and these are the standings. This is what's at stake, Kelly Tennant. Well, they're playing for the top of the Pac-12, and USC had that loss to Arizona in three that they're still frustrated about. This is a real opportunity for USC to match up with Washington and try and take over as we finish out conference play. The Huskies have not lost here at home. Krista Van Zandt. So fast. Krista Van Zandt on the right side is such a nice thing to watch. And here's where Hannah Schreer gets faked out because Melanie Wade is going up like she's going to take a swing so she can't release. That's a really nice job by Wade. Yes! The block right there, Fabricio. That's also a really nice job by Melanie Wade. <laughs> Closing low into that seam with that left hand. Very important as a middle blocker when you're blocking the outside. You have to drop that left hand low in the seam over the net. USC's lead getting away from them somehow. Schreer kept it going. Middle block though for USC and they will break serve. Smart move by Schreer though being up on Krista Van Sand. I'm not sure if she really got a touch on that or if it was in the net, but She's aware that she's going to run out of the back row, so that's good communication and knowledge by her. A lot of ground covered by Hannah Schreer as she had just saved it in and then got herself back over. <laughs> Top server in the nation, Samantha Bricio, give her 64 aces now on the year. That was a scary one. <laughs> Catches the back line. There was no spin on this either. It just floated right back there. Cassie Strickland has to step in on that. Crowd trying to get involved. And a service error to Bricio. You take chances yep. because with a, with a serve like that when it goes in, I think at times probably Kelly worth it, right? Exactly. It's totally worth it. I saw Cassie Strickland make quite a few errors the other night against UCLA, but you can see what she does and what she brings to this team. You can't tell her to take anything off. You just have to let her do it. Let her do it. That was a great set from Haley Krohn. She's making it go a little faster, so Wanabu swung a little quicker. Sabeldon's going to have to work harder to get over and close up. Sina Libero, Natalie Haglin, the all-time leader in digs for USC, attained that goal this season. Strickland off the block. Grisio gets a hand on it, and USC keeps it alive. Go, go, go! Okay. A really beautiful play by Washington. That's how you can tell they're starting to click, is those types of plays, because we've seen them over and over again. They're really doing a nice job of staying at that high level very consistently. Kaylee Nelson has had the arm going here tonight. Really effective, and finally, Olgard in the middle for USC. Just her third kill, and I say just her third because there's a very high standard for Alexis Olgard this year. She has really raised the bar of her play, so expectations for her are very high. They need a lot of production from her. Olgard coming up with an eight-kill match. She did not have an error in that one and hit 571 in the win against Oregon State. Pizza Segola has checked back in for USC. Shaw tries to get 
get over the block, no touch. Washington takes it back. This is the rotation. USC needs to try and get out of this as fast as possible. Cassie Strickland, not quite as much on that one. A lot of top spin. Oh. Robbins sends it to the back row. With a miscue by the Huskies, but they keep it going. Orgard in the middle, but there's Orlandini. And the whistle blows, a double hit against the Huskies, and it'll go back to USC. It's exactly when you want to run the middle is when the other team is scrambling. Try and make it as fast as you can to catch them out of position. That was a really smart move. Crowd not happy with that call. Goes to the middle, and it works. Liana Sabeldin with the finish. Great hands from Sabeldin there. She was the national player of the week after the big win at USC. Mm -hmm. 15 kills, it was a career high for her, and she was awarded for that. She really does angles well as a middle, and so she's getting past that block really quickly and often. Bricio, enough on that one off the block, and USC will take it back. Samantha Bricio is just so calm, cool, and collected. She, she makes it look so easy. Well, we've talked to her after a couple matches, and we've said, you've struggled here, but you've done really well in this area. And she said, I'm just trying to fix everything, so sometimes it's not all perfect. She's carrying a lot for you, I so you have to remember. What a by Krista Van Zandt. Fields will go back to her. What an up by Whittingham. Wade in the middle. We'll say wide and no touch. I would rather see an error like that than just go into the middle with that swing because that she's really expanding the court for herself and trying to see what's open near those sidelines. Much better for a middle to do that. Taylor Whittingham, the freshman defensive specialist in to serve. Back shot to Ruddens. Bricio has had that line all night long. All night long. Now for her ninth kill. She's hitting 400 now. Washington has got to adjust to her. USC has come out on fire here in set two. The Huskies made a little bit of a run, but they have a five-point lead over the Huskies. And don't go anywhere. We've got men's hoops coming up your way. Next, it's Northern Arizona taking on Andy Infields. New Look USC Trojans. Live coverage starts next on Pac-12 Networks. And Mick Haley and USC has a lot of different options, but the one I think they've gone to the most has been Bricio, especially down the line. Bricio has really figured out what she needs to do to get some really good touches off the hands, down the line. She's expanding what she's doing. So now you Washington trying to get those touches down the line, but they have not adjusted all the way, so they're not able to close her down. What worked early against her was serving her to try and take her out of system, so I imagine they're really going to try and harp on that coming out of this timeout to try and do what they did earlier. That's a very good point. They definitely were looking to her with the serve. At the Pac-12 Freshman of the Year last year was also an All-American honorable mention. What an amazing impact she brought in, but just a little more composed player, I think, this year. Yes. You can see she's starting to mature and really starting to get Mick Haley's system and what he wants. Well, and there's also, she has the language barrier. She's from Mexico. A lot of changes for her coming into the program last year. And she's been able to really take control. And they've given her a lot of responsibility. And each week, she's trying to improve a different aspect of her game. A lot of players would become really overwhelmed. And I think she's actually enjoyed that challenge. Two of the top teams in the nation, number four USC and number three Washington here at the University of Washington. Krista Blunt alongside Kelly Tennant. And we have a good one as the Huskies took set one. Oh USC God, leads God. here in set two. And out of the timeout though, Krista Van Zant seems to be that option every time they come back on. Every time. She loves the corners and she has such a nice swing and finish. It's that snap that she's able to find the corner because she reaches high, she swings high, and then she finishes. So it's just falling at the end. Coach McLaughlin said she's really taking her game emotionally to a new level. She really doesn't worry about mistakes. Always very calming. 
Get aggressive. It's a good combination. Yeah, exactly. To the middle, USC. And that's an option for Hannah Schwer. We saw that a little bit earlier that seems to work. Well, Hannah Schwer is getting up really early. She's making herself available. So now what's going to happen is you have Wanabu and Bricio in the front row. So Melanie Wade has to focus on Hannah Schwer. You're going to see a lot more one-on-one -on -one matchups. Served by Crone and Orlandini hesitated for a moment, but let it go just long. Substitutions coming in. Gabby Parker for the Huskies. Tough serve by Van Zandt. Still able to get it though, and off the block. It looked like it was breaking down, but they'll take it. Bricio laughing, like, I can't <laughs> believe I just passed the ball off of my neck and I still got a kill. But she's patient out of system, that's the difference. She doesn't run under the ball, she takes her time after a poor pass and gets herself in the right spot. Leads the nation in service aces. 0.73 percent. Kelly, I've never seen Kaylee Nelson play quite like this. I haven't either. I saw her when they were at UCLA for that match, and she was pretty phenomenal. But this is a new level. I have never seen her be so strong. Nelson had 13 kills at USC back in October. Wanabu past the block and down the line. And that's the right place to go, is at Melanie Wade. She's not a defensive player. She's a middle back there. So you target those kinds of players as much as you can. Three-time Texas State champ. And Zan's pass off the mark. Nelson with a little roll shot. How about Haglin? Nelson again. It goes wide, but I believe they may have called a net violation against USC and this Husky crowd very happy. The net is moving, so someone touched it. Nelson's pretty lucky on that one. Sometimes you start hitting it so hard, you overdo it a little bit. I know she's going for that line, but I'd like to see her be a little more shoddy and decide where she wants to put it rather than muscling it. Tough serve from Fields. Free ball over. You can't give Washington a free ball like that. I saw UCLA do this Wednesday. It was a lob over, they just transition out, and then it's right in your face. You have to make someone work. You have to give that ball to Katie Bill so she's taking the first ball. You have to do something to try and get them out of system. USC with just a three-point lead now here in set two. USC will get it back. Nice job by Haley Crone. She's down on her knee and she still pushes that high enough so Wanabu can reach high. That's the key on that connection is no matter what's happening, you want to get that high enough so she can stay high. She and Haley Crone will get a breather as Pizza Segola comes back in to set and the freshman Elise Ruddens has checked back in. Remember how much Pizza Segola loves that middle set. <laughs> Off the slide, Sebeldin. from Munoz. Short, quick to Oldar. Just one too many free balls over, Kelly. That was really nice. Great job by USC and Washington. I don't know how they saved that one going under the net. It was a really nice move by Munoz. These two teams met up in Los Angeles on October 27th. It's a matter of making those adjustments, both coaches. It's just like a puzzle, putting it all together and figuring out how to make the changes they need. And Bricio out of the back row finds the opening over everyone. Again, her vision of the court is just so good. And the amazing thing is when you're swinging out of the back row, you see the court in a totally different way than when you're in front of the 10-foot line. You really see all of it, so you can take your time with your shots. Segola and the Husky.
Skies will get a break. Can't have a serving error when you get into the 20s. It's all about the timing on those. And that will bring the best server up for the Huskies with Strickland. Ruddens over the block. Bricio got a hand on it. Haglin, an old guard to finish. Missed pass there. Sebeldin was in the middle. Beals somehow got a hold of that one. Van Zandt through the block. And the Huskies will take it back. When Krista Van Sant brings that ball down just a little, she gets those low the low hands that are not pressed over the net. So that's where USC's got to work on that penetration over so you're not getting used low as well as high. Crowd well, getting into it, especially for the service of Cassie Strickland. Also, Kelly. I told you. They I wasn't lying. lying. This place holds 10,000, and we aren't too far off of it. And the Huskies continue to just climb their way back in. How about the big serve? I mean, right in this scene, that's really forcing USC to have to work and talk so much more. But their transition out of this and Van Sant coming inside a little bit. So because Sarah Shaw and Alexis Olgar don't adjust in, Van Sant just cranks it. You have to step in, follow that shoulder. Coming up at intermission, Ashley Adamson will be in our Pac-12 Network studio and she'll have a recap on the men's basketball. From the other evening, you see Irvine and the Washington Huskies. You won't want to miss that and we'll also have some highlights and stats for you as well. But still more to play here in set two, and the Huskies fans trying to get their team back into it as USC came out. Nice job by USC, really, to regroup after yes. really the Huskies, I think, dominated set number one. Well, USC finally settled down, and they realized, OK, we have all the weapons. We just have to do the little things right and stop flying the ball out of bounds and making these unforced errors and making Washington look so good. So they upped the tempo of the sets and the swings, and that really made a difference for them. And now their defense has started to help, and Natalie Haglund's flying everywhere to try and keep that ball alive. This crowd has been into it, and it is definitely, I believe, a factor and has helped the Huskies kind of chip their way back into this one. Down just three here in set two. And their best server, Cassie Strickland. To the block. I don't know that there's necessarily anything wrong with that swing, but now you're going to have Shaw swing on the right side, and Elise Ruddens is going to swing on the left. So Coach Haley making that change, so Shaw has more of a mismatch with Van Sant rather than Munoz right in her face. Good in the middle of action. They'll go out to Ruddens. Takes him off. Samantha Bricio. Smart movement by Washington. They're really creating a wall. Bricio has to see that, aim high, and go to the corners. I know she can do it. I've seen her do it. But when you have that kind of wall that's not moving at all, you have to find ways around. Momentum plays and a tough one there as Strickland serves it into the net. It was just a one point differential. Now USC up two, but nonetheless, the Huskies, you can tell some emotion getting back into this one. They are fighting really hard. So now you have Olgaard in the middle, and I think that USC really needs to utilize her as much as possible right now. Next up to Munoz, and there's the block from USC. Something Bricio has been working on is that left side block, getting her feet over and pressing towards the middle of the court so she's not getting used. She's very late oftentimes, and she's done much better. USC third in the conference in blocks per set. Inside to Bricio, nice up there. 
from Strickland. thought she got the pancake and instead they'll call it down and it'll go to USC and they are at set point. Tight call but really good play by Samantha Bricio. Imagine this ball going out to Van Sant on the outside. He called it. Sabellin kicks it over and USC can't finish it off. Still set point for USC. Short hit to Oldard. game is picked up by the Huskies. Bruce goes cross court. The corner was there, and USC has tied things up here, one set apiece. Really nice finish by USC, and I love that they're going to the middle, establishing that they look much more comfortable. Now, they have to play much tighter for longer periods of time. That sustaining effort. Great swing from Krista Van Sant. I mean, Natalie Haglin, the way she's able to keep this ball in play, in system, so that they can have an option there, that's huge. The Huskies, it was fairly close in set one, and then they went on a big run to take set one, but USC came out a little more firepower early on. The Huskies weren't giving up. The USC takes set two. We're now joined by the head coach of the Washington Huskies, Coach Jim McLaughlin, and Coach, your team taking set one. You knew USC would come back with some changes. What were some of the things that, that caused you some problems there? Well, you know, we had a couple opportunities. We jump on a ball that we shouldn't have jumped on, and they tool us, and then uh, we hit a ball out of bounds. And, uh, you know, I, I think SC is, you know, they played well, but uh, we also shot ourselves in the foot a little bit. What more can you do going into this third set to make sure you can close it out? Well, just take, you know, when we have an opportunity, we have a chance to load our block. We need to get on it and set up a good tight block and be on time and stay in good spots on defense, just create more opportunities. But, uh, you know, we're, we're playing well right now. Oh, you're giving us a good one. Thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. Coach Jim McLaughlin, he's right. His team has looked very good, and they definitely aren't giving up. A USC hostile environment, not giving up either. And they're losing set one. They take set two over the Huskies. We're tied at one set apiece. We'll have more for you after this on Pac-12 Networks. Back here at Washington, we are split one set apiece between USC and the Huskies, and we are joined now by the head coach for USC, Mick Haley. And Mick, got things turned around in set two. What pleased you the most there in that set? Well, I like the way Bricio came back. You know, uh, we got in a bad rut there in the first set, uh, made a bunch of hitting errors, did, did some things that weren't real, real good, and then uh, came back with a good focus and uh, some nice execution there. Played a little bit better defense, too. We've seen what impact running your middles has on your offense. How do you get Olgard and Schreier more involved here in this third set? Well, we have to pass a little bit better. They're double in the middle when, the, when they serve our outside. So uh, I think those guys are one on zero. If we can make a little bit better pass, we might get some free kills here. All right, Nick, thanks. You're giving us a good one so far. We appreciate right. it. Thank you. Well, we thought it would be a close one. We thought it would be back and forth, Kelly, but both big stars have stepped up. Oh, big time. Samantha Brisi on the outside. Finally, something clicked for her, and she has been on a roll. Behind the service line, in the front row, she's taking some nice swings out of the back row. Washington sort of had her number, though, with a triple block out of her back row attack, so I expect to see a lot more of that. But remember what they did to her early on. They really exploited Samantha Bricio by serving to her over and over. So you got to look at that. Kaylee Nelson has caused a lot of problems for USC also. Nelson is swinging so hard and so fast. Like you and I said earlier, we can't even believe it. We've never seen her play like this. And it has worked really well. The fast tempo, getting her that ball so quickly, and then her quick swing, she's getting past the block every time. Eight kills and just one error for Kaylee Nelson.
And the numbers for both teams hitting a little bit better as Washington, that first set really hit, it hurt SC, but they're bouncing back. It did. USC looking much, much better. But to me, the blocking, Washington with seven and SC with three. SC needs to step up that defense at the net. That will also help Natalie Hagelin in the back row. So she's not having to do everything for this defense. It has to be a tandem effort. We've mentioned these teams met up back on October 27th, and the Huskies got the win at USC 3-1. to one. USC trying to turn that around. It's been a long time since they have won here. The Huskies have won seven of the last eight on the home court. Set three is underway. Sarah Shaw, she's the one that got things started in set one, and they go to her again. She got things started, but then she was hitting zero. So she has to increase her hitting percentage to make this team effective. It can't all be on Bricio on the outside. Shaw is so important with those touches that she gets. Pizza Segola to serve, and into set for USC. Reach, reach, reach! Shaw takes some off. gets the point. That's a really tough play to play around, and you can try and close up the block a little more, but when you get net touches like that, it just throws everything off, and it's all about reaction at that point. Jenna Orlandini, tough serve. Lucio gets it, and the free ball goes to the Huskies. to the block, USC's blocking game starting to pick up. Much better because Sarah Shaw is someone that doesn't move a lot on her block, so she's holding it down, she stays there. Alexis Olgard is able to come over and close, and I'd like to see Olgard get there faster with her feet, but she adjusts with the hand. Trying to cover a lot of ground, that one was Olgard, and there's Van Zant. what a cut shot there. Man. You have to adjust the block inside. She's coming in at a very hard angle, so you have to follow her. If she's coming in, blockers have to move in with her. You can't just let her have that. She's not going to turn that down the line where they are. Jenny Nogueras, the senior setter, back in for the Huskies. Takes the lead. Too short, though. Alexis Olgard is a tall player. She reaches very high. She has a really nice jump. So you've got to get that ball high enough. She can reach up and over that block, but you can't trap her in there. Yeah, the set a bit low for her in the middle. Shaw going back to the best shot that works for her is high off those hands, that flat ball. She has such a nice finish with the wrist. I just love that play. And as long as she sticks with it, I mean, she's just so effective. Senior libero Natalie Haglin over talking to Mick Haley. From either side of the court seems to find the right angle. This is the Krista Van Sant party. 11 kills now, over 300. This is just another night for her. She does this all the time. It's just, it's a, reg amazing. just a regular day at the office, isn't it? <laughs> Washington going back to really putting the pressure on USC's block by making things go fast coming down to their passing and their defense is really on the money every time. Look at that line, the all-around game. Krista Van Zandt, she just does everything. Lucio, got a good feel on that one. Wanabu back in. She's had five kills, but she's that kind of player that can be so productive and really get on a roll. She needs to get up and over that Washington block, start exploiting that defense, making them move so that they can get everyone else some nicer touches. Patrol freshman of the week, big numbers against Oregon and Oregon State. We're a little off here tonight. Strickland keeps it going. 
Miscommunication and the free ball to Washington. Short and quick to Melanie Wade and somehow got it to the back corner. Good turn. Schreer has to get up. Let's see if she takes an angle here. Too late. She takes the right angle, but it's a count too late. You have to pick and choose where you're going to go and stick with it and force her to funnel the ball to the other side. Tough read on Melanie Wade, though, and her body oh, movement yeah. on that one. Two, cover! Wade gets an arm on it, sends it out, and USC will take it right back. Mauricio can really get some big points for USC right now, not only just with the serve, but with some really big hits. As long as she can find a way to get up and over that triple block that we saw earlier, out to those corners. They like to go to her out of the back row as well. And a service error and a little frustration on her face. Katie Beals back in for the Huskies. Back to that one somehow. Good hustle by Van Zandt, and they keep it going. Down the line, and that was a quick play before the Huskies could get reset. Just as good as running the middle, and Wanabu is a former middle, so you can run those quick plays and transition to her, and she's so good at it. You catch Washington out of position. Exactly right decision by Crone. Floating serve from Haglund. Huskies will have it to USC. Olgaard in the middle, nobody in the back row, and USC gets it. We are tied up here in set three. Good move by Olgaard going towards that back line, and she's ready, she's got the look. That's the look, it's time to go. She would be intimidating at the net, there's yes. no doubt. A slide play to Sebelden. Wannabe tried to tip it over, but Munoz was right there. Both teams trying to eliminate these kinds of plays because you really want to try and control that ball as much as possible. You throw up anything for either side in this front row and they will absolutely dominate you. by Krista Van Zandt. Love how she stomps back into the huddle. That's what the serve does for Washington, though. That much power, you create so many overpasses, so you can get kills and blocks like this. It just really changes the game for the serve. Big momentum plays. The momentum shifters, and that leads to the block as well. This serving rotation is the bane of every team's existence in the entire country. It's really been something. At USC, the Huskies had four aces, six serving in that one. Putting up there from Sarah Shaw. Great adjustment, too, because that was a higher tempo, uh, a slower tempo, higher set, more of a lob, and Van Sant saw that. She took a little bit off and just went for high hands rather than taking a big swing because that block was there. They had time to get over. Huskies never giving up here in set three. They've extended their lead over the Kaylee's USC Trojans. Four point lead here in set three. We'll have more right after this on Pac-12 Networks. Krista Van Zandt has been on a roll for the Huskies, Kelly. She does everything. She's been passing. She's had some really nice swings. She's been bringing it inside, going to the seams, down the line. Absolutely crushing balls. Every opportunity USC gives her, she takes advantage of. And then she stomps into the huddle and says, yes, I am here. Love the emotion and the numbers. 12 kills, eight digs, three blocks. Not much she hasn't done. She needs to get an ace or something. Throw that yeah, in there, too. Can you do something else right? <laughs> I mean, Is there geez. anything else you can add? Well, Cassie Strickland has definitely added some very yeah. difficult serves to handle on the other side. She does lead this team in aces. Go long. Grisio 
wasn't gonna let it go and stuck the hand out, Washington gets it. And it's not that she just takes really good swings. She's very athletic. She does all the things that a good volleyball player does, but she sees the court at a level that many people do not. She's also very patient. You see her out of system when she has to take swings. Very patient, she takes her time. On the block, she gets over, she holds. Very patient with her movements. All those things, you just slow the game down for yourself so that you can see everything better. Tough serve, hits the net from Strickland. Wanabu, over everybody. They'll say there was a touch, and finally USC a break as they will break serve. Substitutions as Pizza Segola comes, comes back in as well as Elise Ruddens. At the last second, tips it up and over. Couple times now that's worked against SC. Someone has to decide that they're gonna take that ball. Whoever it is, there's a plethora of people on the court, six different people that can take it. You have to communicate though, that's a major issue there. Communicating with Sabelda. It is the Krista Van Zandt Show, and we've all been invited. Anytime Shaw brings that ball down and contacts it anywhere but at the peak of her swing, she's gonna get blocked. Especially when you have a player like Van Sant, she has blocked her every time the exact same way. You've gotta stay high, high hands. She is just stringing together. Another block, and Kelly, you know this better than anybody. How good does a big block feel right oh, there? Oh, it feels so good, and everyone else feeds off of it. There is nothing like a big block, and they just keep getting them over and over. That's 12 now for Washington. Getting the crowd into it as well, and for good reason. Look at this. I mean, perfect timing. They're not late. They're together. The press is good. It's all there. So now USC has to adjust. If you're seeing four hands in front of you, find ways around. Roll it. Tip it. Be creative. Well, Sunday hit the court with women's volleyball. Number four, USC takes on Washington State. what they're going to bring. We knew what we were gonna get here at Alaska Airlines Arena on the campus of the University of Washington. Number three, Washington, and number four, USC. And it's a good one. Krista Blanc alongside Kelly Tennant. And one set apiece for both of these teams, but here in set three, the crowd has gotten into it, and the Huskies find themselves up by eight points. It's been a combination of things, though. It hasn't just been serving, although Cassie Strickland has definitely helped out. But it's been that combination of the serve, the blocking game has also picked up. And Krista, and Krista Van, Zandt. Van Zandt. She's kind of good. <laughs> she's kind of good. Kinda. <laughs> I like that. She's kind of good. She definitely is that. Leads this team in kills. Coming into this one, hitting 310 on the season. But she is truly that all-around player, the junior who was the number one recruit in the nation in 2011. Showing for good reason, and out of the timeout, a good play there for Sarah Shaw. Really good play, Sarah Shaw, seven kills now. Going into the back row to serve, big offensive weapon back there. She's really smart with her shot selection when she is swinging out of the back row, so I think she's a really good option at this point. Three seniors for this USC team. The team that had six starters back. Picked second in the preseason of Pac-12 play. That's where they're sitting as the double hit. Contact called by the up official on Van Zandt.
player Kelly that seems to be on a roll, why not continue to go to her until they find a way to shut her down? Oh, yeah, exactly. There's no reason to go away from her, and USC has to do a better job of pressing to take court away. They're letting her have everything, and even Alexis Olgard is pressing her hands over, saying, I have to do better with the penetration at the end. Checking back in is Taylor Whittingham. Another talented freshman. The number two recruit class in the nation is freshman group for Mick Haley's USC Trojans. Garrett back to Van Zandt. Fast. Fast, fast. So blockers have to be faster. Pretty simple, but it's one of the hardest things to do. Well, the back row has to be ready to be down yep. and ready to go. Easier said than done. Back set to Ruggins, and she gets a lot on that one. A nice finish by the freshman. See how different it is when these players are aiming towards that back line and towards the corners. They're so much more successful. Anytime they try and bring it down or they try and get too crafty with it into the seams or low on the hand, you just get blocked. You can't do that in these types of matches. That works against lower level teams, not here. Haley Krohn and Hannah Schreer are back in for USC. And there's the block, Hannah Schreer making an impact immediately. Really nice finish. Holding the block for a long time is one of the most important things that a lot of players forget. Some people put their hands up and bring them back. You've got to hold it up for a long time so you can hold the touch. Strickland right into the outreached hands of Ebony Wanabu, a solo block for her. This was a really nice job by Wade of faking it, going up for a one-on-one -on -one for Strickland on the outside. But Wanabu does such a nice job of coming in the way they should do on Van Sant. They did it right on Strickland. They came in, followed the shoulder, and Wanabu closed it down. There's no doubt these two teams are showing us why they deserve to be in the top 10. Number three, Washington. Number four, USC. Penn State with a win against Wisconsin. They go to 23-2. And, and Texas sitting in the top spot, 18-2. And, and Texas will play tomorrow. Four teams for the Pac-12 in the top 25 as Cal is at number 20. And then Utah with a high RPI of 22. A lot of other schools getting votes as well. Well, you know, I don't really see that top 10 changing much in the country. And I say that because the way the other conferences work out, there's not going to be that many upsets. The only change really I see would be the Washington SC. What happens here and what do they do for the rest of the season? Does Colorado do something crazy to one of them? You know, what happens? And, and you have to watch for those. Uh, it will be interesting to see as this Washington team has to go on the road yes. after this weekend. They will play at Stanford and at California, and that will be very interesting to see. And then for USC, they will go to Washington State on Sunday. We will have that one, and then they will get to go home and play Arizona and Arizona State. So interesting little shifts here the way the schedule plays out towards the end also well and all those teams you just mentioned you never know which one of them is going to show up and surprise you we saw that with arizona as crone misses her serve arizona swept usc earlier in the season you never know you just don't know there are no gimmies in pac-12 play frustration by haley crone on that service error coming out of the timeout Goes back to Schreer. They'll say she caught it. What an angle. Really nice job. I've seen Schreer with that swing a couple times this year. She just turns and turns until she can't turn anymore, and then she finds the line. Anna Schreer, the junior out of Arcadia, California. Back to serve again, Samantha Bricio. And USC would love to see her get on a roll here with the serve.
that violation against USC. That was interesting to see. It didn't look as though when we looked down, but the net was definitely moving. Nothing drives McHaley more nuts than plays like that. I can speak from experience. I have been yelled at. It definitely got him up on his feet on that one. You just have to be a little more focused. I'm not sure exactly what happened with Shaw there, but you just cannot be touching the net in these situations. It didn't look like a play where it needed to happen, but nonetheless, it did. Schreier ends up sticking the hand out the last second, and it was the wrong move. It's not about how you start, it's about how you finish. And as cliche as that is, it's so true. Being able to sustain the mindset and the effort the entire time and not have those weird plays, that's what really sets you apart. Tough set from Clone. I don't know how she did it. Two, two, two. Shaw, but Hagelin's there to help her out. Whoa with the finish, and USC needed that point. Nice set from Crone, good decision making, and nice job by Wanabu of reaching high. She didn't bring it down, she didn't try and muscle it. She did a really smart thing in staying high. It started with a beautiful save by Haley Crone, the junior setter, and then Hagelin got involved as well, and that's one of those plays where you put that kind of effort in, you want to get the reward, and they did, as yeah. Gabby Parker has checked back in for the Huskies, and that one goes long. But I will give her points for the glittery headband. I yes, will do that. I love it. She brought it here tonight. Strickland coming back in now for Gabby Parker. And Strickland has really gotten it done from all areas of the court tonight. see the frustration on their face and USC now just three points away from tying things up here Davis goes to the middle Ebony Wanabu good set and I like that Wanabu doesn't try and do too much on that. That was a little tight, and she just made sure it went over. Jim McLaughlin wants to talk things over. USC starting to get warmed up. How nice is it that when your setter takes the first ball, Natalie Haglin, who is an amazing libero, basically has the hands of a setter. I mean, you see that happen all the time. Not a lot of teams have that. You see a lot of bump sets but the location from Hagelin is so good. Definitely a plus to have that kind of experience and that versatility if you're Mick Haley. And for Mick Haley and the USC Trojans, this is what they will have to face. We mentioned they will be at Washington State. We will have that for you on Sunday on Pac-12 Networks. And they will get to go home to play Arizona and Arizona State. A little trip to UCLA and then finish up with Colorado. So. I think that schedule favors definitely USC compared to the Huskies, as we mentioned, Washington. They're going to have to hit the road after this one. They go to Stanford and Cal and finish it up with Oregon State and Washington State. So they will get to finish up at home, but this next road trip, definitely a tough one. Well, remember those rivalry matches at the end of the season will always be doozies. There's so much emotion involved. Teams oftentimes are playing for certain spots, whether it's in the Pac-12, in the tournament, you have RPIs on the line. There's all this stuff going on, and you just want to beat them. That's, That's at right. the end of the day, you just want to win. You just want to beat the rival, don't you, so, no matter what the implications. you got to be careful. That's what it's all about. Well, both of these teams would love to be here at the end of the NCAA tournament. This Washington team is going to host the NCAA semifinals and finals. What a big event that will be for this program. First time in their history. What an effort from Hagelin, the Wannabe couldn't save it. I do like the effort, though. The go for it, never say die, and that's what Natalie Hagelin brings to this team. You feed off of that in so many ways. Here's the rotation again, Strickland back there. into this. Ogard in the middle. 
Texas Old Guard had that look on her face again, Kelly. Yes, she does. That's a good block, and they're throwing those hands up. So now Krista Van Sant is going to be forced to try and figure some different things out. She's come inside a little bit earlier, and that worked really well for her to get right past the block, and USC didn't adjust. Leads this team in blocking. A little floater from Pisa Segola. Belden in the middle, Hacker of course, gets a hand on it, and the free ball over. Pass off the mark from Bricio, and Van Zandt knew what to do with it. USC is giving Washington a lot of opportunities to finish here. Nice set from Beals. Can't really blame Bricio too much on no. that one with that overpass. That's yep. a tough one to take. It is. Mauricio gets that one. Out to Shaw, right into Kyla Munoz's hands. Kyla Munoz, the senior out of Monroe, Washington, a fifth year senior in the transfer out of BYU. Set point. and she gets the finish. Not my first choice to go back to Ruddins, but she is finishing high, so that's good. Yeah, Keeping that right. ball in play, she can be a little hot and cold sometimes. And remember, she is just a freshman. Set point number two for the Huskies. Fields to Munoz, the back corner open, and Washington takes set three. They go up two sets to one over USC. We knew it would be a good one. Another close one here. We'll see if set four can be the same. Nick Haley's got to make some adjustments. His team now down one set to two here. Two to Works. The fans are getting into it here at Alaska Airlines Arena. The Huskies go up two sets to one over number four, USC. What a great crowd on hand. And they always Pack this place for Pac-12 Volleyball. Take a look at the numbers through the first three sets. More kills for USC, but the hitting percentage has been a big difference in those attacking errors, Kelly. 23 attack errors for USC. That is what is plaguing them. And then on top of that, you have Washington with 15 blocks. So Washington has done such a nice job of shutting things down. And the energy on the UW side of the court is untouchable at this point. USC has got to do a lot of work to create some more pressure for them. Oh, you're right. And try to take this crowd out of it as well. What an advantage as they have just had momentum play after momentum play. But no doubt USC not giving up on this one. They were right in it, a very close set three after taking set number two. They just need a little more production. Wanabu with nine kills, Bricio with 17. But Sarah Shaw has had seven, only hitting 043. She's such an important part of this offense, and she's getting so many sets. She's had 23 sets. That's second on the team. She's got to put the ball away. Both teams with two service aces, but USC seven service errors compared to just three yeah. for the Huskies. And what a night Krista Van Zant has had also for the Huskies, and 17 kills for her. She gets it started here in set four. Tough set from No Garris. Nelson to the back, Grisio. Sends it back over. Krista, can we talk about this coverage on the block? <laughs> Washington picking every single thing up, so they are able to transition over and over again, and the focus to finish by Strickland. So good. Just to make it what a tough serve there from Krista Van Zandt. And that, my friends, is why you go in the seams, because two people go for the ball, it causes confusion, and makes it very difficult. I think she heard us. We said she needed an ace on the night, Kelly. Oh, she yeah, had, she gosh, had now she's just perfect. about everything else. There you have it. Jeez.
I think that's okay because Bricio wants to get past that big block in front of her. So she's trying to go for the corners and the sidelines like I was mentioning earlier. So she has the right idea. So now she just has to refine that finish. The error there from Van Zant. And they go back to USC. Sarah Five. Sarah Five. Get a 3-0 lead. Now, put the three one here in set four. Bricio's matched up with Nelson on that right side, the blocker. Watch that one. So athletic. She's just getting past Bricio because she's so fast. Samantha Bricio has to know that Nelson is running that tempo. She's got to get her feet there quicker. Kaylee Nelson has been on fire for the Huskies. Tough serve to handle for USC. That time for Melanie Wade. Washington just has so much confidence right now. And USC is really uncomfortable and sort of jumbled in a lot of ways. They just need one good play to get back in this. Good plays like that. Bricio heard you. Perfect pass. We'll let that happen. That's definitely one of the things that Mick Haley mentioned to us at the break, that mm -hmm. passing had to be better for his team. Well, yeah, not only just for the middles, but for the outsides, too. You can't make your setters work so much because the location starts going by the wayside. Too much. Untimely error there. Agnew will come back in into the back row. Tough night for Alexis Olgaard. Hitting 0-5-6. Kylan Munoz is a blocker, is scary. She is constantly in the right spot, and she is never waving her arms. She doesn't fly out. She just sticks with it, and you always see her finishing back towards the middle of the court. She was hanging in the air for like 10 minutes to get that touch. That was big time. Six point lead by the Huskies as they are up over McKaylee's USC Trojans. Sunday, it's the debut of UCLA women's basketball on the Pac-12 Networks. The Bruins host number 12, North Carolina. And how about this play? How do you like it? Let's take it all the way in. Coverage starts Sunday at 3 on Pac-12 Networks. Two of the three players of the week here with us tonight in this match. The offensive player, Kristen Higgins of Cal. How about a career-high 20 kills against Colorado? But we've been watching Jenna Orlandini, the libero. Career-high 31 digs, Kelly, against Arizona State. And Ebony Wanabu. Fifth player Ooh. of the week selection? I mean, come on. She has really been phenomenal. No! It's never easy to step right in at this level, but she has done just that. Oh! It's on! It's on! She can lead her down with a timeout. Now that is a set if I've ever seen one. Great location, great height. Leona Sabeldin has this amazing jump. I just love it. Both of these teams running the 6-2. They have two different setters, and that just continues to allow the powerhouses up at the net for them. But it takes great communication and the rotation for both of these teams. Time too much from Bricio trying to get around the block. That block from Washington causing a lot of problems. Well, and she gets a touch on that one, so that'll be a point for USC. But you talk 6 2, and these teams are able to do it because the players are able to adjust and they communicate and the connection is there. But many teams anywhere across the country, it's a really difficult thing to adjust to having two different people giving you the ball. Oh, Continuing to do what 
she's been doing so well as of late. Well, and she's starting to bring a little more power on the ball. She's that kind of player that literally pushes hands back on the block. You can be pressed over as much as you want. She will force it. Very strong. digs from Natalie Haglin. We talk reading. She's always leaning to the right side. She knows where she needs to take the correct step. That's why she's always picking up these amazing balls. She's so quick and smart. Stripping back to serve. And that's what happens. She causes the missed pass. And that leads to the finish by Washington. Lugos almost, almost took out the line judge on that one. <laughs> she had so much on it. Tough serving from Cassie Strickland, though. 33 aces on the season. And a seven-point lead now by the Huskies. McHaley going to try to get things turned around. Never easy to do especially on the road. But next Wednesday night, Pac-12 Networks is serving up women's volleyball. You don't want to miss number three, Washington again, battling number six, Stanford. In a late season showdown, live coverage starts Wednesday at 7.30 on Pac-12 Networks. Those two teams met up earlier on October 20th. What a matchup that was. You talk atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. Felt the crowd tonight, and this was just phenomenal. It went five sets, Washington coming out on top, but such great play from both sides, taking over that number seven Stanford team. And really, I think it comes down to between these three teams, it comes down to the offensive spread that they have. They have so many offensive weapons and options. They're using the middles so they can go to the pins. We see one on ones, and then the blocking. I mean, it's just phenomenal all the way around. Right around 5,000 fans for that one. We're feeling it here tonight. They yep. have definitely embraced this team, and for good reason. You definitely uh, get your money's worth when you're coming in to watch Pac-12 women's volleyball. That's for certain. And we have a good one here tonight. USC going to try to break. Cassie Strickland, easier said than done, but a nice up there from Shaw. And they do it. Wanamu finds the back line. Finds the back line on that quick play that we only see a couple times per match. They used it a little more last weekend when I saw them. But I talked to Coach Haley about it, and I said, that is my absolute favorite play that you run. And he said, we need to start doing it more because it is so effective. No one expects that out of one of them. Definitely deceptive with her quickness in the middle. And they're going to call the service the violation against Grisio. I've seen that violation at least one time per match. Every time I've seen USC this season, it's been quite a few times. And it's tough when she's just going for it. She has this long stride. So you have to be really aware of where you're starting. Definitely is a tough toss. Van Zandt, one place to go, and she did it. Krista Van Zandt, 18th kill on the night for her. Nick Haley's going to bring Taylor Whittingham back into the back row. Nice to claim the handle, but a net violation against the Huskies will go USC's way. USC needs some major ball control right now so that they can run the middle with Olgard. You can get Wanabu some fast tempo sets, and you can really start executing. They have a big hole to dig out right now. Incredibly deceptive, but just so smart, knowing what's available to her. Good job again by Wade. She's basically a one-on-one -on -one with Wanabu out there. Just missing the pin on that one was Van Zandt. Set 
to Wanabu. Block on a hand on it, but the Huskies can't keep it going. USC just continues to chip away. You have to just keep giving the ball to Ebony Wanabu when she's up there. She's hitting 300. Just keep going for it. I'd like to see it a little faster, but she's making the correct adjustment. She's making it work. Wanabu gets a break. Pizza Segola back in. more confidence from Elise Ruddens, the freshman. Well, sometimes it just takes a couple plays where you have the right reach, the right touch on the ball, and then you find your sweet spot, and then you can just keep going back to it. And then you have the good reaction times like she does in that last play. Ruddens missed a couple of matches earlier. She was sick earlier in the season. thing about Elise Ruddins is Coach Haley was saying he has a competition between her and Emily Young and they really battle it out for their spot that spot and there's something to be said for having to be competitive every day in practice you find what works you're gonna find that line you're gonna find how to get over a big block so that you can be out there big minutes for minutes for Elise Ruddins and Coach Haley also said she's the kind of player that doesn't look like she can do some of the things that she can I think that last swing I didn't think she was no. gonna get there that fast Kelly no she is very deceptive with what she she does, she's smart, and she's really learning the game. And it's gonna be a process for her, but you can see there's so much potential there. Absolutely. McKaylee's teams have had so much success over the years. 20 plus winning seasons in 23 of 25 years. Looking forward to postseason play, and you never know. The Pac-12 no. title's still out there, but they're gonna have to figure out a way to get past this Washington team. Stanford lurking as well. California playing very well right now. They are. They are really turning it on at this point. And I'm excited for Coach Feller and that Cal team because we saw them quite a few times last year and they were hurt and they were sick all the time. There was no depth on the bench. He couldn't do anything. And I mean, the way they've battled back has been really impressive. Incredibly resilient and we've gotten a good one here tonight. This is the one alongside Kelly Tennant at Alaska Airlines Arena on the campus of the University of Washington. Number four USC in town taking on number three Washington. And the Huskies have a two set to one lead. And the lead here in set four. We've seen that play either. That was an interesting location for Krista Van Zandt. We haven't, but that just shows what kind of range she has. And Coach McLaughlin is really planning for postseason. This is when coaches start trying a few different things out to see what works. What more can we add to what we do? Shaw just enough off the block. That's her sweet spot. She just hasn't been able to do it enough tonight. Location of sets, dropping down low. She's been finding those low hands in the block. She just has to keep going back to that right shot. There's to Nelson, and they will say just long. That one was close. Just needs a little more finish. That was a little too flat for Kaylee Nelson. Nelson with 10 kills on the night, hitting 280. We've seen some good ones from her. Good blocking from Cassie Strickland. She may not be the tallest outside, but she's gonna get out there and get some really big blocks. I've seen it all season. She continues to get better because she's always in the right spot. Sabelda 
Lynn is just closing it down. She knows exactly how many steps to get over to, sh to shut this down. That's all Strickland though, man. I love it. Love the emotion. Such a tough competitive player. Three years of Pop Warner football. Two, 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 two. USC gets it back. Andrew Schmidt will check in. Freshman defensive specialist out of Saratoga for USC. Back set to Kaylee Nelson, and nobody can keep that going on the other side. It's almost like running the middle when you go back to Kaylee Nelson. That's how fast it's moving. I don't know if you can tell unless you're literally here seeing it happen. It is crazy fast. So quick. Service off the mark there for Katie Beals. It'll go right back to USC. Beals, the sophomore setter out of Austin, Texas. She's always so composed. She and Nagaris, just very calm. They just do what they need to. The effort is always there. They understand the game in such a dynamic way. It's a big difference as your setters, too. They're the ones running the show out there. Sean gets a handoff. goes to Washington. Look to Sabella to the right to have it. USC working it around. I was hoping that that's what Haley Crone was going to do. That was such a smart move. That's second or third time she's made that move. Wanabu constantly keeping it high. Hoops coming up next, Northern Arizona and USC. It's going to start right here on Pac-12 Networks. <laughs> USC not giving up. 21 kills for Bricio. Gosh. Four-point lead now by Washington, and now the best server for USC. Samantha Bricio, this is where they could definitely use a big run from her. And she's taking a few steps back to make sure she doesn't foot fall. One violation already, and into the net, and it may have thrown her off a little bit on the timing, but that's tough timing there. That's a very difficult time to miss a serve. I, Coach Russ Rose at Penn State said to me one time, though, he goes, is there any time you want to miss a serve, Kelly? Did you ever get allowed to miss a serve? No. So it's true, but when you get to these kind of points, they, they love you too. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> I was a serving specialist you, my sophomore year. You were. I remember. <laughs> the pleasure of calling somebody. Way back in the day. Oh, thanks. Good rally here. USC not giving up. That was a big arm there from Wanabu. And you don't really see her do that often because she does finish so high. I like that swing. She brings it down just a little bit. That's a lot of power low in that scene. But you can't do that all the time because Washington's block closes it down low. USC has to win this one. And for the Huskies, they don't want to go to five. And they get it back with Crystal Van Zandt. Always seeing those hands when she can use them. She just knows. She feels it. Kaylee Nelson checks back in. As well as Jenny Nogueras. Just enough, up and over everybody. Great coverage by USC in that scramble play and a really nice set from Haglin. Patience by Shaw. 
Ebony Wanabu back to serve. Don't see her serve a whole lot, but they don't rotate her out on this one. Two, you use all your subs. That's the problem. That is a problem. And boy, Kaylee Nelson. Solid numbers from her. And a big serve and an ace from Krista Van Zandt. Gets the crowd into it. Two points away from taking this one and sweeping USC on the season. Kaylee Nelson ate before she came in here. She needs to eat before every match. She needs to repeat the action. <laughs> Another tough serve. Kaylee Nelson, 21 for Krista Van Sant, 19 blocks to USC 7. So you can tell, just an overall dynamic performance, very balanced. I am so impressed. Washington steps up in a big time pressure situation. Well, it wouldn't be easy, and the Huskies go to 11 0 at home, 23 1 and 15 1 in Pac 12 play. As we take a look at the updated standings, and they continue to extend their lead in the top spot in Pac-12 play. USC cannot afford any losses if they want to stay where they are. Now tied with Stanford, both at 12 and three. Really nice job by Washington, sole possession still. We thought it would be a good one, and it definitely was. This crowd was into it. That's gonna do it for us for Kelly today. I'm Krista Blunt.